Okay, so right off the bat, watching House of Dragon episode 1 and thinking back to Game of Thrones episode 1, I noticed a really weird difference that didn't seem important at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I was fascinated by it. And that difference is children. We start Game of Thrones with a lot of children, a lot of young characters. And it's not like child characters are like a good thing in and of itself, of course not, but it's fascinating to me on a writing level. It's not about age, it's about space, and it's about signals. Let me explain. But actually first, just to get this out of the way, yeah, yeah, I'm judging House of Dragon unfairly and prematurely. I own that. I'm not happy that I'm doing that I told myself I wouldn't. Told myself to give it space, to give it a fair shot, and this video is a sign that I am already failing. And that said, I legitimately did enjoy the first episode. I was intrigued, I'm on board, I'm gonna keep watching, but oh man, it is hard not to compare this to Game of Thrones, like, immediately. Impossible act to follow. So, I'm gonna say my little idea that's gonna make Game of Thrones look amazing and this show look lesser, but don't let this impact your judgment. First episode of the show was really good, I'm rooting for the show, and I'm gonna keep watching, and you should too. Every story deserves some space to grow. Anyway, Game of Thrones. Children, we got all the star kids, Rob, John, Sansa, Arya, Bran, Rickon. We got Daenerys, we got Joffrey, and all of them are even younger in the books, by the way, still young here. And then we even have the direwolf pups, we got the dragon eggs. Why? Why so many? This was a signal. There was a sense of longevity that Game of Thrones was loudly projecting to us on a character level. We are going to watch these characters grow up, mature, transform completely. And this signal was a priority of the story from page one. And again, childhood itself is not important here, it's just concretizing that longevity. That is the essence here. And that longevity itself was evident in the actual situations of these characters. We see a lot of characters, both children and adult, who are begging for major change. These characters are all explicitly not happy with where they're at in life at all. John, Arya, Viserys, and Danny. And these characters are struggling with where they're at. Bran is expected to grow up fast. Sansa wants to marry Joffrey now. Robert hates his job and his wife. Cersei, it's more subtle, but we can still see it. She is not happy. Ned is struggling with his duties to his king. Catelyn is struggling with that as well. Transformative change is coming to all of these characters' lives. We see that clearly and these journeys will be long ones. So we have clear aesthetic signals for longevity for character journeys with all of these babies. We also have story signals as well with their situations, how dissatisfied they are. They're not just babies, but particularly unhappy babies. So that's one priority. The other big priority here is Game of Thrones giving us a subject matter, giving us a very clear thematic dilemma. In episode one, we see honor, we see apathy, we see cruelty. So along with these signals of change, we get the sources of depth the show will draw from in those changes. The interplay between the honorable and the cruel with people like Robert thrown in the mix, apathetic, indulgent, lazy, bitter, and we eventually realize this is better identified as weakness. In episode one it feels more like apathy, but whatever you call it, that is our trifecta. Honor, cruelty, and weakness or apathy. And we get richness between characters on different ends of this triangle, and then we get characters like Tyrion who we can't quite place yet. He seems apathetic and indulgent on the one hand, but he's also smart and mature and maybe honorable, but also he's related to all the cruel characters. Seems like a character who will move back and forth on these actions. Lots of potential here, lots of complexity, different kind of journey for this character, but still a very long one being forecasted to us. Now, along the way, we also get the short-term stuff, season one setup, the plot and character dilemmas, we got the Stothraki business, we got the John Aaron mystery, and finally the incest stuff, which dominates season one and beyond. House of the Dragon prioritized a lot of similar plot and character dilemmas. We have a series in Daemon, we have a series in Rainies. by the end we get Rhaenyra and Daemon, then there's gonna be this thing between Alice and Hightower's dad, making her court the king, and that's gonna drive a wedge in this relationship, both personally personally, probably romantically, but also politically now. We also got the random jouster dude and Damon. So basically we get Damon versus everyone basically, except robot prostitute. So that is the priority of House of Dragon in its first episode, this web of character and plot dilemmas. And these were compelling to me, but where's the depth gonna draw from in this show? I didn't see that deeper framework. I didn't see a dilemma like honor, cruelty, weakness. And where's the signals of longevity? Where's the signals for series long growth? Not the priority here. And I'm not saying it's not there, not saying we won't see it next week or the following week, but Rhaenyra is gonna be queen. We're being forecasted that journey. And to me, she already seems kind of halfway there. She seems pretty queenly already. And I'm sure she has a long way to go, but she's no Robert, she's no Joffrey, she's no Tommen. She's really confident, she's smart, she's fairly accepting of her new role as far as we can see in the end. And granted, chances are she's not ready and she's gonna be in over her head, etc. But we're not gonna see this character go from having nothing to becoming breaker of chains. We're not gonna see her go from meek scaredy cat to mother of dragons. We already got the dragon, she's already good with dragons. So a journey is being forecasted. The space for that journey is not being forecasted. Damon seems like he's gonna go wild, but again, he already seems halfway there. Viserys seems like he's gonna be weak and maybe a little mad in his grieving, but he also seems halfway there. And again, 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 the topic here is what episode one prioritizes, not what will actually happen. There could be drastic development they're not signaling early on. My point is that Game of Thrones heavily prioritized that signal, and that was something that really drew me in. House of the Dragon just is not prioritizing that signal. They're prioritizing plot and character dilemmas that will dominate the first seasons. Now why is this? One reason for that could be that the mother series of this series has already signaled that growth to us. Game of Thrones was beloved for its 
its character growth. We can already confidently expect that in this new series, no need for signals. And now we get story space that's freed up to prioritize other stuff, that's valid. Or it could be that this is a different type of show, without character transformations as drastic, but still interesting nuanced development, and lots and lots more focus on plot intrigue, on character intrigue, also valid. Okay, now this next part is a little spoilery, but you could figure it out from the trailer too, you can skip to here if you want, but apparently there's going to be a time skip mid-season 10 years, and time skips are complicated. Time skips can be used for transformative change, but again we usually do see that use with the young characters. We see the world change and the characters change with it. We see potential realized, we see entire personalities developed from seeds planted earlier, but pre-time skip it is seeds, not full personalities. When characters do have full personalities, I feel like time skips tend to be more about developing plot. Maybe I'm wrong here, but it's like this is how the situation has extended itself. The events that started years ago resulted in this down the line, and that is going to have impact on creating circumstances that demand new things from characters, but it's not going to be transformative personality growth. The characters we saw in episode 1 seem to have fully developed personalities, and that's why I'm predicting a plot focused time skip here, but with one exception. Allison Hightower is the one character who so far doesn't seem to have come into her own yet. She's also young, and we do see this big plot starting with her. Seems like she's going to become something quite different throughout the season. Everyone else I'm sort of getting similar vibes from. Obviously, barely anything to go on here, we'll have to wait and see. So that longevity thing that was something I was looking for, didn't see it, but I can understand some of the reasons why I might not have seen it. The thematic thing was something I actually was really hoping for. Political intrigue is enough to carry a story, but what made Game of Thrones great in my opinion was the depth that came from that honor, cruelty, weakness framework. I love that. And the show did a lot of other frameworks like that. Exploring those types of things, that type of depth through the political intrigue, that's when Game of Thrones really shines in my opinion. And maybe that stuff will show up next week in House of the Dragon, maybe it's already there, I'm sure people are already typing comments with different theories about what that framework is, but in Game of Thrones, when that first episode ended, everyone knew exactly what the show was about. Everyone saw honor in Ned, cruelty in Jaime and Viserys, and apathy and weakness in Robert and Danny. Here, in this show, I know the plot, I can see interesting characters, but I'm on the lookout for more here, and I'm ready for more, and I'll be watching the rest of the season for more. And just to be clear, I don't want this to be the same show as Game of Thrones, but I am hoping for the same level of depth. So, call me out for judging early, I don't mind. These two things didn't like bring the show down for me, like I said, I still enjoyed the episode. It's a lot more about appreciating how incredible George Martin was with the setup for the original story. Subscribe, I'll be doing more content on the show if I have stuff to say, we'll see. Oh, and by the way, for anyone who watched my Arcane vs Game of Thrones Madness video, I can't help but notice three of my Madness ideas happened to pop up with the series. We had the pregnancy thing with the baby dying as our inception point, leading to obsessive model building of a grand city he isolates himself with in his grief, and then we also have a little bit of fire stuff. Coincidence, obviously, but come on man, wrong Targaryen. Anyway, so I have something kinda out there planned, kinda crazy, we'll see if it works, but keep on the lookout for something different for 100k. Shoutouts to the patrons, been helping a lot of folks with their own writing projects on there. Shoutouts this week especially to Lechtansi, that is a guess at how to pronounce that, today is a day of failures. Schedule in the next few weeks might be a little on the fritz, but lots of videos coming, so thanks for watching.